Okay, so now I got my hole already drilled into it. 1-8 drill. Taking a 1-8 rivet on the rivet gun. Pushing it down through. Oh. So it's nice and flush. And just rip that on. Like so. Now I'm going to have that little piece down here on the bottom that I'll pound flat with the hammer on the anvil real quick. Back in a second. Okay, now for the finishing touches. All I have to do, I got it riveted on, is mount it on the trap. Same side that the uh, same side that the dog goes on. Oh, backwards. That won't work too good now, will it? Oh, and that marries up perfectly with the, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but that marries up perfectly with the, uh, with the dog, the high point on the dog. So now I just finish crimping this on in place, keeping tension on it, and slowly finishing my, my bends here. And the same with this side, rolling it over, and squeezing it down. Okay, so the key is to make sure that that swivels nicely, and it does. I don't know if you can see it, this swivels really easily, rests perfectly on the dog. Next thing you gotta do is give this a function test. Now, this one won't be so sensitive because what I gotta do, what I like to do with mine, is I file down the dog, the round part in that dog, so that, oh, let me zoom that back so you can see it. So this is the, the completed trap, the new pan mechanism, it sits very flat, I don't know if you can see how flat that sits very very flat gotta have a spot for the dog to recess into and animal steps on this and it slides out Puh, little, uh, little rust cloud but that uh, just that, that simple that quick and easy to build took me all of uh, maybe I don't know maybe 20 minutes to build it if that and uh, I'll set this one up one more time show you just put the dog on to the, to the jaw somewhere around the center Flip over new triggering mechanism, 
lay it on, make sure it doesn't close on your fingers. So it rests on the uh, on the table here, so you guys can see. So I'll flat that rests, and I'll set up the other one. Oh, I've already got it set. Just bend it down 90 degrees, like like this one. Center, center, try not to catch my hands, and voila. There you go, you got two, two modified conibear traps. Basically the same thing, just a, just a little different in design. Both of them will be very effective, I know. And I'll just take the camera now and show you how flat that actually that actually sits. Like I said, before I take this out and set it up, I'm going to file down my dog, make sure that it's uh, the weight of a weasel or a squirrel. When they walk on that, will 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 be enough to trip the dog. And as soon as I know I I got I got it sensitive enough to, to trip for a weasel, I'll call it done. And uh, it was just that quick, that simple. Took me all of maybe 15 minutes. Cheap, quick, fast, and simple. Can't get no better than that. You can see here where, where that 90 degree piece actually rests on the uh, high point in the dog. At least I hope you can. and how nice and flat that sits. A mink, a weasel, a squirrel should have no problem wanting to walk through that. So there it is, that's the uh, completed set. You can see the uh, con bear with no uh, normal trigger. It has my modified trigger on there. Because it's modified, I was able to cover it up with leaves. Really conceals the trap well. And you can see the bait just hiding in behind there. The weasel should come right through there, step on that. And hopefully I'll have one there in a couple days. Nothing looks out of place. So the modified 110 pays off. Never thought you'd catch a fisher in a 110. But there you go. A beautiful fisher. It was set for a weasel. And uh, I end up with a fisher. Who would have thought? Okay, here's another one of my modified uh, Modified uh, 110 conveyors, modified trigger, and I got a muskrat in there for bait. I don't know if you can see if I zoom up on it. Jammed in there with a stick. And uh, you can see it pretty good. This box 